Introduction to the Redemption of the Rune Land Traveling to the Rune Land, unexpectedly obtaining the world runes that Ruiz has been searching for, following Ruiz on a fantastic journey, passing through every city dot state, meeting and getting to know many heroes, participating in various events. These runes actually contain the power of divine level heroes. Goat Orns, Knocking Equipment and the Power of Flames Chapter 1 Ionia You are listening at NovelFull.audio Hey kid, should we try it today? The tavern owner leaned against the bar, propped up his beer belly, and smiled as he picked up a glass of malt, looking at the young man in front of him. Ling Su, who was wiping the wooden table, didn't stop his work. He looked up at the glass of wine, shook his head gently, and adjusted his accent to speak the language of this world from his throat. Forget it, boss. My tongue tells me not to touch it. If there were 181 cups of palace jade liquor, perhaps I could consider taking a sip. He silently added in his heart. The tavern owner looked at the young man in front of him with short black hair, wearing a jacket of the same color, a thin and thin figure, and a kind face. He tilted his lips and said. You said you, this guy, learned all the ways to make wine in less than a day when you came to me, but you can't learn how to drink. It's really boring. Speaking of all kinds of alcohol, this is actually just a very rudimentary small tavern, with no more than five types of alcohol, and people who come here to drink basically only order the cheapest malt wine. The tavern owner shook the glass of wine in his hand, looked up and drank it, then took a heavy breath and continued chatting. The wine made from inferior malt is so bad to drink. It would be great if I could meet the legendary brewing master, Garagas. I really want to taste the wine he brewed himself. Unfortunately, I heard that he seems to be in the area around Frederick, and I don't want to go to that cold area. Even living in such a small village, the tavern owner can learn about the distant region of Freerdrad from a book depicting a map of the Rune continent. This book is said to have been created by a former traveler who traveled various places, in order to allow everyone to understand and appreciate the customs and traditions of other places. The tavern owner occasionally goes to the market near the Navali region in the heart of Ionia to purchase some brewing ingredients. On a certain trip, he came across this book and on a whim, bought it. When Ling Su heard the word, Galagas, a subtle smile rose from the corner of his mouth. The staff in front of them wiped all the tables clean. The tavern owner took two steps inside the bar and reached out to take off the brown coat hanging from the coat rack, casually draped it over his body. As he walked outside, he shouted to the back. Let's go, Johnson. It's closed now. Okay, boss. Ling Su folded the rag he used to clean the table and followed the boss out of the tavern, watching as he locked the door. In the past few days, the operating hours of the tavern have become very short. It was not even late at night that it closed early, and Ling Su understands the reason for this. The boss has already saved enough money and is ready to start packing things. He plans to leave this remote village and move to Navali, where he will run a larger tavern and live a better life. Saying goodbye to the boss, Ling Su walked towards his own house, which was a small single room rented by the tavern owner. On the road, two young villagers who often drink alcohol and do physical labor recognized the bartender at the tavern, and one of them greeted him. Good evening, Jason. Did you close so early tonight? Ling Su nodded. Yes, as you all know, the boss has been. Most of the drinkers have already heard about the tavern owner's plan to move. Ah, is Dalpan really planning to leave like this? Where should we go for a drink in the future? After chatting with the two again, Ling Su returned to his small room. Reaching out from his patch torn pants pocket, he took out a key and inserted it into the lock hole of the door. As he pushed it open, the old wooden door creaked. Entering the room, closing the door, Ling Su suddenly relaxed and lay on a small wooden bed. I've been living in this world for a month now, and I haven't had the opportunity to inquire about my parents' whereabouts. I haven't even seen a heroic character's figure. But thinking about it, how could I possibly come across such a small place? 
It seems like I should leave with my boss and go outside to see the world. Looking at the ceiling, Ling Su's thoughts began to diverge. What the tavern owner and other villagers don't know is that Ling Su comes from a blue planet called Earth, and his real name is Ling Su, while Josen is just the name of the original owner of this body. Although Ling Su often plays the game League of Legends, reads time travel novels, and is also very interested in the world and the background story of League of Legends, he still feels incredibly shocked and unable to believe that he has truly traveled. Why did you come to the world of Rune Land? He also couldn't remember the details clearly, and this memory seemed to be intermittent and incomplete. What he remembers is that when he was still living on Earth, he witnessed in the news that his parents were absorbed by a mysterious substance resembling a black hole and sucked into it. When he went to the scene of the incident, the same thing happened. The object resembling a black hole crushed Ling Su's body, leaving only a strand of soul. He descended to the rune land and became possessed by the boy named Johnson, receiving his memories as a result. Johnson is now a homeless man whose parents were taken away by illness more than a month ago. With a weak physique, he lacks the strength to work and even has a problem filling his stomach. Most people in the village are also not wealthy, and no household is willing to bear the burden of an extra person in their family. The boy survived by gnawing on tree bark and insects for several days, but eventually starved to death. Then, Ling Su took over the body and learned about the world's most widely used language. Valoran, and some lifestyle habits. It seems that due to the unknown substance in the back of his right hand that occasionally glows, Ling Su was able to exert considerable strength with his thin and weak body, and thus obtained his current job with the tavern owner. This small diamond-shaped luminous substance existed when Ling Su was still on earth, and it seemed to blend with his soul, to the point where it still existed even after a different body. After adapting, this substance will no longer automatically emit light, which is why the villagers did not notice any abnormalities. Strange journey, unknown things on the back of my hand, perhaps I have to wait until I find my parents to awaken the missing memories. Thinking so, Ling Su's eyelids began to become heavy, and he slowly closed his eyes and fell asleep. The next morning, Ling Su arrived at the tavern and found that Boss Dao Pan was already asking his staff to help him move the things in the tavern. Derpun, who was directing the workers to work, glanced at the young man approaching and greeted him, saying. Good morning, my friend. I don't have any work to do today. I've packed my luggage at home, except for the wine stored in wooden barrels at the tavern. After we move them all to the carriage, I'll be leaving for Navarre. Ling Su nodded and weighed the small amount of luggage he was carrying, indicating his intention to come. Boss, let me go with you. I also want to go outside and see the broader world. Upon hearing the other person's words, Derpun burst out laughing and walked over to pat Ling Su on the back, saying. I've figured it out, right. I've invited you a long time ago, but I didn't expect you to be so conflicted that you agreed now. You're such a smart and capable kid, I can't bear to leave you behind. If we go to Navarre, we'll definitely have a better life. Ling Su knew in his heart that these were all polite words, and the real reason was entirely because he not only learned things quickly and worked efficiently, but also proposed to only receive a salary lower than one dot third of the other staff members. This tavern owner chose him directly in the beginning and invited him to accompany him when he proposed to move. No matter in which world, there are always people who are greedy for small gains. Well, why do they look so much like a crab boss and his yellow square employees? Ling Su muttered to himself. After packing all the things, Dal Pan paid the few assistants the remuneration they deserved, and then took Ling Su to ride on the carriage together. Watching some animals resembling horses and donkeys dragging goods in front of him, Ling Su scratched his head and then borrowed the book from Mr. Dalpan to read, intending to pass the time. Preface Mysterious Dragon You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ads by Google equals Window Ads by Google Push, the land of runes, giant god peak On the towering mountaintop, a massive, 
deep blue star dragon with a golden crown stands proudly above everything below. Even if it seems to be imprisoned here, the sense of oppression it brings is incredibly powerful. The Star Dragon King Aurelian Thor, the creator deity, has gone through a long agony and finally feels the weakening of the crown imprisoning magic above his head. His long dot awaited opportunity has finally arrived. Once, the cunning giant deity begged for the arrival of Aurelian Thor in a state of worship, admiration, and awe, and so he came. It was only when Thor put on his eyebrows the dazzling and gorgeous golden crown made of star roses offered by the giant gods that he realized it was the conspiracy of these tiny humans. His power was imprisoned and a small portion was taken away by the giant divine race for their use, to create powerful, transcendent divine warriors. Aurelian Soulborn could break free from this shackle, but if he did, the curse brought by the crown would cause the planets in the universe to explode one after another and disappear, which was not what he wanted to see, and this became the handle in the hands of the giant gods. After enduring countless years, Thor finally waited for hope. The world was facing a massive war and disaster. The curse magic of the crown weakened, and he began to try to break free from his constraints while condensing a small comet, throwing it over the rune land and spreading it into the universe. In the vast universe, not far from the rune land, in a galaxy, a giant dragon with a light blue color and a semi-imaginary and semi-real figure roams here, surrounded by numerous planets floating around. At this moment, he had just stopped the movement of a nearby black hole, preventing the surrounding asteroids from being devoured. If this damn thing were to eat the nearby asteroid, Thor would definitely feel very sorry, of course, me too. The blue dragon let out a ethereal voice and muttered to himself. In fact, the blue dragon is not doing such a thing for the first time, and there are actually two reasons for doing so. Apart from the first one. He loves all the stars in the universe very much, the other reason is that he has become interested in black holes and has been trying to master their power. Every time he interacts with a black hole, his understanding of black holes will increase a bit. Through the supreme wisdom and divine power of the blue dragon, he has now penetrated this peculiar celestial body and simulated similar powers for his own use. He began an experiment by injecting a little divine power into the three meteorites beside him, causing them to drift in three different directions, and then using the imitated black hole power to absorb the meteorites back. And one of the meteorites that changed its trajectory flew towards a blue planet, penetrating the atmosphere and entering the interior of the planet. Due to the large size of this meteorite, even though it was burned down a lot during the fall, it still retained a portion and crashed onto a piece of land on this blue planet. After waiting for the passage of time in the universe for a while, the blue dragon's mind moved and a small, black hole-like substance appeared next to it, but it was white. At this moment, small black holes suddenly appeared in several other regions of the galaxy, absorbing the three meteorites together, and one of them was the one that hit the blue planet. Just in an instant, the three meteorites emerged from the small white hole next to the blue dragon, but with it came some other tiny substances. The other two meteorites that floated in the universe for a while only brought more meteorites, while the meteorite that flew towards the blue planet just now was accompanied by two shimmering, star-sized objects. Surprisingly, I brought over even the tiny life on that planet. It seems that my control is not precise enough. Before the blue dragon could think for long, a fast-flying small comet passed by his side. He lifted his dragon claw and gently grasped the small comet. At this moment, the small comet suddenly dissipated and turned into a speck of starlight. This special comet that can dissipate autonomously made the blue dragon think of something. He glanced in the direction of the dissipated small comet and said, It's Thor. As soon as the ethereal words fell, the blue dragon bypassed the meteorite and other asteroids, carrying only the two star objects transformed from life on the blue planet, and flew towards that direction. Soon, he saw a small planet, which was the place where Aurelian Thor was located. The Rune Land 
Although it is unknown where the two star substances held in the dragon's claws come from, driven by the principle of caring for all life in the universe, the blue dragon, upon sensing the existence of other life on this planet, descended upon it and prepared to search for Aurelian Thor. At the same time, it used divine power to protect these two star substances and casually threw them down somewhere. Two stars fell from the sky of the rune land to land, and their former bodies no longer exist. Instead, they transformed into two souls and became attached to an area of the rune land, two recently deceased humans. Chapter 2 Encounter You are listening at NovelFull.audio Opening this book, Ling Su took a quick glance and learned that this traveler indeed had some skills. This records most of the entire rune continent and its corresponding introductions, except for Shadow Island, Bondar City, and Giant God Peak. Based on the memories of watching the background story of League of Legends while living on Earth, Ling Su knows that this is understandable. The Shadow Island, full of terror and a sense of death, the mysterious city of Bondar that is impossible to find, and the difficult to climb giant peak are not areas that ordinary humans can reach. Nevertheless, the Demacia, Noxas, Freodrod, Piltwave, and Zwan of the Valoran continent, as well as the other side of the Shurima continent, including the overseas islands of Ionia and Bilgewater, are all recorded in this book. And Ling Su is located in a small place called Whaley, located below the left of Ionia. This island, known as the Primordial Land, is filled with magic and life everywhere. Along the way, Ling Su saw many strange and strange plants, as well as unknown animals the size of rabbits that occasionally jumped out onto the roadside and jumped into the bushes. There must be a chance to see characters in League of Legends in Navali, right? Ling Su thought to himself and began to look forward to it. After passing through a mountain range and forest, and after a period of trekking, Ling Su and Boss Dalpan finally arrived at the Sodot called Heart of Ionia. The province under the jurisdiction of Navali. A towering tree stands on the side of this market, it seems that as long as you see this giant tree, you can find where the forest market is. Surrounded by two to three meters high guardian trees, the ground is covered with lush green grass and brightly colored wildflowers, showcasing the natural beauty of this nascent land. Looking at the scenery and the various people walking on the road, Ling Su's vision suddenly widened. Most people's outerwear is made of simple fabric and wrapped around their upper body, with a rough linen shirt underneath and brown or blue pants underneath. Some people wear straw hats, while others have painted their faces with different colors of oil. This is the custom of the people of Navali, how's it? It's very novel, isn't it? Boss Dalpan was in a very good mood, and he was about to start a new life here. Ling Su smiled and nodded, looking at the small stalls set up by fruit or grocery merchants on both sides of the road. There were many unique fruits and items selling on the stalls. Not long after, a middle dot aged man dressed well and clearly better than the ordinary people around him walked over and greeted Dalpan. This is the merchant I made an appointment with the last time I came here to purchase brewing materials. I booked a rented tavern with him because the original owner of the tavern had gone on a trip, uh. This way, I don't have to find someone to build a new tavern anymore, saving me a lot of trouble. Derpan introduced the man in front of Ling Su and explained the reason behind the matter. Fortunately, Derpan's deceased father left him with a savings that he had saved for most of his life, and with the money he had earned from running the tavern for so many years, it was enough for him to buy the right to use the second dot hand tavern for a period of time. Ling Su somewhat perfunctorily congratulated Boss Dalpan on picking up a big bargain, and then looked at him with a smile as he raised his hand and took out a leather wallet from the pocket of his brown coat. He took out a bill with a face value of 500, three bills with a face value of 100, and 20 gold coins. The currency of the continent of Valoran has almost been unified, with gold, silver, and copper coins as the main trading currencies, with one gold coin equals 10 silver coins equals 100 copper coins. The new currency that has been circulating recently, paper money, has gradually entered people's vision. It is said to have been invented and created by Mrs. Piltwald, and they call it Valois. 
The advantage of this currency is that when dealing with large transaction amounts, carrying a few banknotes with denominations of 100, 500, or even 1000 is much more convenient than carrying a heavy bag of gold and silver coins. A one denomination valor banknote is equivalent to one silver coin, 10 denominations are equivalent to one gold coin, and so on. The price for the entire tavern's usage period is 100 gold coins, and Mr. Dalpan chose the payment method of 800 valos and 20 gold coins. Glancing at the portrait of Congressman Piltworth printed on the valo banknote, one of the portraits was the familiar face of Ling Su. Congressman Jess Tallis. Did you print your portrait on paper money just one day after taking office? Okay, it's been a long time since he took office. Ling Su couldn't help but joke in his heart. He had already watched the official League of Legends anime, Twin Cities, while living on Earth, and now the meme of Congressman Jess Tallis is still in his mind. It has been quite some time since the animation was completed, and Jess is no longer a new senator. After completing the transaction and saying a happy cooperation, the middle-aged man handed the key to the tavern to Dal Pan and left. Dal Pan first took Ling Su to stroll around the stall for a while. Ling Su casually spent two copper coins to buy a green unknown fruit. Dal Pan generously bought a well-made black coat for Ling Su, and then bought himself a few loaves of bread. Ling Su didn't know if his boss was in a bad mood or felt guilty for giving him too little salary before, so he even gave himself a piece of clothing, although the price of four silver coins was not expensive for this boss. As Ling Su's thoughts dissipated, a furry hand suddenly reached out and picked up the fruit from the stall next to Ling Su, where he had just bought fruit. Ling Su's gaze followed his arm and he suddenly froze. Dark brown hair grows all over the body, wearing red and silver armor, ape facial features, green eyelids with a ring of red eye shadow like paint, one hand holding a stick on the ground. Looking at the other person on the side, under the silver white helmet was a seven degree penetrating eyepiece, and the beard under the exposed chin seemed to be braided due to being too long. He was dressed in a light yellow robe with the main color tone, and his hands behind him held a long sword that seemed to be shining. Mao face, lay gong mouth, seven eye goggles. I'll go, monkey brother. Sword saint. In a flash, Ling Su's heart rang with Chinese roast. He never thought that he would suddenly meet the characters in the League of Heroes so soon. Ling Su, holding a fruit in one hand and a coat in the other, stood still. It wasn't until they finished shopping and were about to leave that he realized it. Monkey. However, the words were swallowed back by Ling Su. He just remembered that although he knew them, they didn't know him. Is it difficult to say to the other person, I know you very well in a game. This is simply ridiculous. There will definitely be opportunities to encounter them in the future, hmm. Watching Yi and Wukong walk away, Ling Su slowly calmed down his excitement and comforted himself. Discovering the young boy beside him staring in one direction, Dalpan glanced at him and said with a, I understand, expression, why, are you interested in the Vestaeans? Dalpan, who had come here from time to time to purchase brewing materials before, naturally saw this kind of Vestaean tribe, so it is not uncommon. This hybrid creature with a half-human and half-animal form is very common in the Ionian region. No, no, just take a casual look. Ling Su withdrew his gaze and tried to maintain a normal facial expression. Subsequently, the boss took Ling Su to the carriage and arrived at the newly purchased second dot hand tavern not far away. The tavern in front of me is much larger than the tavern in Dalpan's village. When I opened the door and entered, at first glance, the huge space was enough for dozens of people to drink and chat here. The quality of the wood used for the tables and chairs in the bar and guest seats was also very good, and the old appearance was not obvious. Overall, it looked not much different from the newly built tavern. After settling down here and earning back the cost of renting a tavern, I can find a beautiful lady to be my wife in Navarre. Thinking about this wonderful life makes me happy, said Dalpan as he looked at the bar. Ling Su smiled slightly and remained silent thinking that after living here, 
he would have the opportunity to meet more people and maybe even meet his parents. The back of the tavern is a place for people to live. The two of them carried the luggage from the carriage into the room. Dao Pan lived in the large room on the right, while Ling Su lived in the small single room on the left. During the process of carrying luggage, Dao Pan always looked at the thin and small young man next to him with confusion. After finishing the task, he said to the other party, I'm curious, how could you have such great strength? I thought these luggage would take a long time to carry, and I even planned to spend money to find a few people around to help if I was too tired. Um. Maybe I was a strong man in my previous life, Ling Su said awkwardly after hearing the boss's words. ZhaoZhuyuan.com When he was in the village before, Ling Su had already been very restrained, keeping his strength at the level of an ordinary person. However, this time when carrying luggage, Ling Su always remembered the scene where he had just met Master Yi and Wu Kong. Unconsciously, he easily moved everything, which surprised Dao Pan a bit. Fortunately, the other party didn't pay too much attention and only cared about their new room, which made Ling Su breathe a sigh of relief. The strange substance in the back of his hand has always been a mystery to him. Currently, it seems that this thing has no harm or side effects besides bringing him considerable power. Taking back his thoughts, he walked into his room and glanced around. Ling Su nodded in satisfaction. It is said to be a small single room, but Natalie's house is much more spacious than the wooden houses in the village. The well-crafted furniture is also fully equipped, and items such as wardrobes and full-body mirrors were not available to Ling Su when he was in the village. Walking up to the full-body mirror, Ling Su began to scrutinize his own body. He appears to be around 18 years old, with short black hair, a thin face, a patched old outfit, and a frail body. The few days before the original owner Jocelyn left, he didn't eat anything that humans should eat, which also created his current appearance. The originally decent features were also lowered in appearance due to his weak body. Even though Ling Su took over this body, his three meals every day were almost always a dry and hard bread paired with a bowl of vegetable soup, which allowed him to adapt for a long time. I miss Xilong Bao so much. I miss soybean milk deep dot fried dough sticks so much. This is what Ling Su thinks when he chews hard bread. Hang the black coat that Mr. Dalpan bought for himself in the wardrobe, wash the green fruit, and eat it. Ling Su lay on a comfortable wooden bed, intending to take a rest. Chapter 3 Area's Speech You are listening at NovelFull.audio The night in Navali is very beautiful, and the vast sky is endless. A small part of the plants around the road even emit fluorescence at night, which is incredibly magical. Even at night, many people are still outside without going home, and the lively atmosphere is much different from that of remote small villages. This is the best time for a tavern to open. Workers and farmers who have been busy all day, and ordinary people who play around, usually come to nearby taverns to have a drink, relieve fatigue from the day, or chat and laugh with friends. As early as noon, after enjoying a nice lunch at Navali, the boss who had finished resting took care of his young staff in the tavern. They cleaned the tables, chairs, and floors, prepared barrels of wine, washed the glasses one by one, learned several new wines in the tavern, and waited for the customers to arrive. When all the guests were drunk, they swaggered out of the tavern and embarked on their way home, as if it was already early morning. Derpan habitually lifted the back of his hand to wipe the sweat off his forehead, looked at the customers walking out the door, and then glanced at the bills in his hand, suddenly revealing his usual smiling expression. Just one night's income is worth several nights in the village, it's really amazing. Dalpan said, but we're also very busy. When the guests are almost full, we can hardly cope. It seems like I need to recruit two new assistants. Ling Su swept the ground and raised his head. Indeed, the number of guests has doubled several times. Looking at the simple and young boy in front of him, Dalpan stepped forward and patted the other person's shoulder. With such income, I definitely won't mistreat our little brother Johnson. How about your weekly salary increasing to eight silver coins in the future? Thank you, boss.
boss. Ling Su smiled and thought to himself, Boss Dao Pan is actually a good person. He used to be greedy for small gains in the village and raised the price of some wine to make enough money to live in Navarre. Now that business is doing well, he has not forgotten to raise his salary as a colleague. The mundane days passed for several weeks, and Ling Su's body gradually improved with the improvement of three meals a day. He had almost lost the previous feeling of thinness and weakness, and his complexion had also improved a lot. The meat made from a camel-like animal in Navali has a very delicious taste, paired with soft and delicious wheat bread, which is a beloved choice for the people of Navali. This is a great happiness for Ling Su, who has been eating dry hard bread and vegetable soup in the village for a month. When Ling Su lived on Earth, he saw this animal like an alpaca in the official CG short film of League of Legends. It was a story about a little boy who secretly cut down a log in Navarre and was caught by a collie and Shin now it seems that this animal can not only be used as a tool for dragging goods, but also be made into food for people to enjoy. Perhaps it is because parallel worlds also have more or less connections, and the time calculation method of Rune Land is the same as when Ling Su was on Earth, with 7 days a week, 20.4 hours a day, and 365 days a year divided into 12 months. During this period, Ling Su worked from night until early morning, and then slept until around noon. He would go out and wander around to see if he could find his parents or meet Master Yi and Wukong again. Of course, he also thought that since his parents, like himself, were brought to the rune land by the substance resembling a black hole, they must have changed their bodies at this time, and it would be very difficult to recognize each other. The only way now is to have more contact with the characters in League of Legends, as they may have extraordinary powers that can help them. Strangely, Ling Su always had the same dream during these few days of sleep. In the dream, he would always see an unreal, blurry, dragon-like giant figure and an irregularly shaped stone emitting red light. Although there were some doubts in his heart, Ling Su couldn't know what this dream represented and could only ignore it. Today is Saturday again. This day of the week was originally the day when Mr. Dalpan chose whether or not to go out of the village to purchase brewing materials in Navali, but he has now settled here. At this time today, he can consider doing some other interesting things. At noon, Ling Su woke up and put on a newly bought set of clothes. A rough brown shirt and matching pants. This set of clothes was bought by him for two silver coins, paired with a black coat given to him by Boss Dal Pan, which is enough to get through this somewhat cool autumn. As soon as he opened the door, he saw Darpun standing at the door, locking his own door. So coincidentally, Boss, are you also going out? Ling Su greeted. Upon hearing the voice behind him, Darpun turned around and chuckled. You came out just in time. I heard a guy say that in the heart of Navarre, which is also known as Presidian, there is going to be a speech today. It is said that the convener is the famous figure from Ionia, Aurelia. Let's go join in the fun too. Upon hearing this, Ling Su, who had been feeling a bit dizzy from just waking up, suddenly became energized. Blade Dancer Aria, who was only a dancer a few years ago when the Nox's legion crossed the sea to Ionia and invaded Navali, awakened her own strength and fought against the Noxes to protect her homeland. She also cut off one arm of the then legion leader. Swine, declaring Ionia's victory. From then on, Arya was revered by the people of Ionia and became the leader of the resistance army. That battle was called the stand-up battle. I don't know what kind of speech Dao Mei will give today. Thinking of this, Ling Su said to Dao Pan. Okay, I'm also very interested. So the two of them walked to Prexition. After crossing the winding mountain road and reaching a flat area, the two of them saw a towering tree. Under the tree, there were numerous Ionian people who seemed to form a circle, their eyes fixed on the center of the circle. As the two approached, Ling Su quickly saw familiar figures. Yi and Wu Kang. In the crowd forming a circle. They are also here. Ling Su smiled and continued to look towards the center position. At the center of this grassland, the circle surrounded by everyone is a square, 
with a rock platform higher than the surrounding area, and the back of the rock leans against the giant tree. Ling Su, who was tiptoeing and looking inside, saw the person standing on the platform and his mouth suddenly opened into a zero shape. In addition to Aurelia, a blade dancer dressed in red and black clothes and wrapped in silver and white soft armor, there were several other people standing on the platform, all of whom were characters that Ling Su was extremely familiar with. Kalma, the Apocalypse One, dressed in a purple robe, with brownish-red skin and a magical blue and white stone floating behind him, Yasuo, a swift swordsman with a flowing hairstyle and wearing a blue cloth shirt and a sword at his waist, is known for his swordsmanship, wearing a mask, revealing a tattooed back, wearing green loose pants, holding a cross sickle. Akali, with the uniform height of Yodel people, a purple cloth suit, and a fierce heart wearing a mask. Kenan. And the last person left Ling Su with some doubts in his heart. That is a rune mage named Ruiz, with a blue-purple skin, a big beard, a scroll on his back, and black pants and brown boots on his lower body. Why is he here? Ling Su is puzzled by Ruiz's appearance in Ionia. Ruiz is not from Ionia and may have come here for some purpose. However, he didn't think much. The appearance of so many characters from League of Legends in front of him was enough to make his heart surge. The scene in front of Ling Su reminded him of one of the official CG short films of League of Legends. Aurelia led the people of Ionia to fight against the Nox's legion led by the undead god of war, Sean. Except for Keres, the people standing on the platform all corresponded to the characters in the short film, who were fighting against Sean in that battle. At this moment, Aurelia looked around the people, looked for the book garden www.jiaoshuyuan.com, and met Kalma with four eyes, nodding at the same time. If the former is the leader of the Ionian people's resistance, then the latter is the spiritual leader of this land. Aurelia took a deep breath and spoke. Today, bringing you all here is something very important to tell you that our peaceful and peaceful home has once again been threatened. Upon hearing these words, everyone present had an ominous premonition. I think everyone has already guessed that the Noxes have come here again, wanting to invade Navarre and take away the land of Placid, but what's different is that they have another purpose this time. At this point, Arya looked at Karma again. Karma turned around and raised her hands to cast a spell on the giant tree behind her. After a moment, a stone monument miraculously floated out of the tree trunk, with an irregularly shaped dark red stone embedded in the center of the monument. Seeing this peculiar stone, Ling Su's eyes immediately enlarged, which was very similar to the stone he had dreamed of in the past few days. If it was still very blurry in his dream, then seeing the real thing right in front of him immediately reminded Ling Su of what it was world rune. In legend, these things are the origin of all things in the rune land and the beginning of the birth of magic. They contain incredibly powerful magical power, which is why many people want to obtain them and control this power to launch wars and rule the world. And there is more than one rune in the world, scattered in various regions of the rune land. I didn't expect one of them to be in Ionia, it was so exciting from the beginning. Ling Su also guessed that today's matter will definitely not be simple. Chapter 4 Shocking Ritz won throughout the year. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Taking a glance at the floating stone tablet and the rune embedded in the center, Aurelia turned back to look at the people. This is the legendary magical rune that possesses the power to destroy the world. The Noxas wanted it, but strangely, no one knew how they discovered it. It was originally hidden here by Karma. At this point, Arya looked at Liz to the right and gestured for him to speak. Ruiz took a step forward, cleared his throat, and let out a deep and weathered voice. Hello people of Ionia, I am a wizard who has traveled far and wide. I came here from afar for this rune, but my purpose is completely different from that of the Noxas. I am searching for scattered world runes to imprison them and prevent others from obtaining them, in order to avoid disaster. The people around you look at me, I look at you. As ordinary people, they don't understand much about runes. In order to make everyone believe in me, 
I will participate in this battle of resistance against Texas, help everyone defeat the enemy together, and then take this rune away. I will temporarily imprison it in my scroll, take it to a safe place, and seal the rune forever. After Ruiz finished speaking, Arya continued. My fellow countrymen, our homeland must not be invaded by the Noxes, and world runes must not fall into their hands. Otherwise, Ionia and even the entire world will face a huge disaster. The enemy will attack at any time, so please be prepared to fight at any time. Someone in the crowd raised their arms high and clenched their fists, shouting. Aurelia is right. We all remember the invasion of the Noxes back then, and now they want to do it again. We still won't compromise. Aurelia also raised her right hand and shouted loudly, Fight for the land of the newborn. Fight for the land of birth. Fight for the land of birth. The people shouted along with Arya. The familiar lines were shouted out from the audience at this moment, which couldn't help but make Ling Su feel a burst of excitement. Surprisingly, there was such a thing happening. There was no presence of Ruiz in that CG short film. It seemed that the story of Rune Land was changing. He thought to himself. Why did Rez and the Norksons know that Ionia was hiding a rune, and why did I dream of this rune? And that vague mysterious dragon. Ling Su had too many doubts in his heart, so much so that Arya announced the end of her speech, and everyone dispersed one after another, while he still stood in place. Derpun sighed on the side and showed a distressed expression. I finally came to Navarre to start a new life and plan to live a good life. How could this happen? I'm really unlucky. After talking to himself, the boss took two steps back on the road and immediately realized something was wrong. He turned around and saw his young man half bowing his head, as if thinking about something, without any intention of leaving. Hey, Jason, are you feeling speechless about this too? Dalpan shouted. Interrupted by the other person's words, Ling Su finally regained his senses. Uh, yes, I didn't expect the war to start again. Well, boss, you go back first. I want to stay here for a while longer. Dalpan glanced at the people not far away, except for Arya and his group, as well as Yi and Wukong, who had not left. He smiled knowingly and said, Do you want to make friends with the Vestaeans? Young people's curiosity. Well, all you need to do is remember to come back before the tavern opens tonight. I need to go back and rest for a while, thinking about how to get through this terrible war. Ling Su smiled helplessly, bid farewell to Dal Pan, turned around to look at Aurelia and others, feeling excited but not too embarrassed to approach, after all, he was just an ordinary person and didn't know how to greet the characters in these games. He did not forget his own confusion, his gaze swept over the crowd and then turned to the dark red rune embedded in the stone tablet. Everyone naturally didn't notice Ling Su on one side, and all they cared about now was the upcoming Noxas and the rune in front of them. Master E. Aurelia greeted E as she approached. As the swordsmanship masters of the Infinite School, Arya and others are certainly familiar with it. The story of Master E accepting a Vastaean as his disciple has also been passed down in Ionia. E nodded and spoke. I and the people of Wukong have also been mercilessly killed by the Noxes. In this battle, we will definitely do our best. Thank you, Arya said, looking at Ritz again. Master Ritz, do you have any thoughts on why this rune will be discovered by the Noxes? Many people have heard of the rumor that this great mage is searching for runes everywhere, which is also why Aurelia and others would know Ruiz. Ruiz replied. A while ago, for some unknown reason, a strange and powerful magical wave spread from the continent of Shrima to the entire land of runes. This wave resonated with the world's runes, causing them to become active and emitting energy waves. Since then, even slightly stronger wizards on this continent can sense the presence of these runes, so there should also be wizards among the Noxes. Karma on the side spoke up. I also think so. Now that they know about it, they can only fight. That's right, this rune must not fall into the hands of the Noxes. 
Once used by one of their wizards, it will bring a devastating blow to the world. Ritz showed a serious and solemn expression. As soon as she finished speaking, Akali, wearing a mask, turned the sickle in her hand and said in an indifferent tone. Did you finish speaking? Then Kenan and I will withdraw first. The old man is still waiting for us to go back. The old man naturally refers to the leader of the balanced sect, the Eye of Twilight. Shen. After Aurelia nodded, Akali and the silent Kenan turned around and planned to leave. On the other end, Aso remained silent and took a sip from the wine jug held on the right side of her waist, taking a slow step forward. At this moment, Kalma, who was about to put the stone tablet and runes back into the giant tree, suddenly noticed something unusual. She noticed that the originally calm runes began to flicker and emit her own dark red light. At the same time, Ling Su had been staring at this rune for a while without realizing it. His gaze could not be moved but he was completely unaware. His brain began to become dazed, and the unknown substance on the back of his hand began to emit a white light uncontrollably. Everyone present sensed something was wrong, except for karma. Aurelia and Ruiz, who were still beside them, stared at the dark red rune and felt strange. Akali, Kenan, and Aso, who had taken a few steps, saw the young boy not far away and noticed the white light on the back of his hand. In just a moment, the dark red rune broke free from the stone tablet and flew towards Ling Su at an extremely fast speed. Seeing this scene, Ruiz and Kalma almost simultaneously used magic to control the rune, but it had no effect at all. They could only watch as the rune drifted to the young boy's side and magically integrated into his hand. Rui Ziduan's eyes widened as he quickly ran to Ling Su's body, lifted his hands onto the other person's shoulders, and shook them vigorously as he said. What's going on? What did you do? Although Ling Shugang was a bit confused, he could still know what had happened, and being shaken by Ruiz's two shakes completely restored his consciousness. Damn it! I don't know what the situation is either. You ask me, who will I ask? Ling Su's heart resounded with Chinese roast, and his mood was extremely complicated at the moment. The others quickly approached as well. The awkward silence lasted for almost ten seconds, and Ling Su, who was panicked, dared not face the bald mage with blue and purple skin in front of him. His eyes were wandering, and he noticed the fruit trees on the side. Finally, he spoke up. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on either. I just heard that the fruits in this area are good and I want to pick some. Ruiz ignored the other person's words and once again activated his magic, trying to pull the dark red rune out of their hand, but it still had no effect. Runes must not exist on anyone. Taking a deep breath, Rez reluctantly raised his arm and aimed at Ling Su's right hand, wanting to cut it off. As a Vastayan, Wukong was quick-witted and grabbed Liz's arm, staring at him in a sharp voice. What do you want to do? Aurelia also took the conversation and said. If you want to harm the people of Ionia, I think it will greatly affect our trust in you. The two sides were deadlocked for a while before Ruiz withdrew his strength, and Wukong also released his hand. Ruiz glanced deeply at the young man in front of him again, then turned his head and said. You don't understand how terrifying world runes are. They can't be possessed by anyone, and one person can't hold on to this power for long. It can only be sealed. Harvest Classic Lines X2 Cough, it's already this time I'm still thinking about these. Ling Su's mouth twitched lightly. Aurelia turned her gaze back to the young man in front of her and asked, What's your name? It's still Dao Mei who is kind. Balding my head scares me so much. I almost lost my hand when searching for Shuyuan www.jiaoshuyuan.com after slowly calming down, Ling Su replied. Hello, my name is Johnson and I come from Wary. I just moved to Navali to live. I'm sorry, but I don't understand why this happened. I don't feel any magical fluctuations on him, he's an ordinary person, Karma said. How could it be? 
Did his parents or ancestors have wizards, and he was inherited by blood? Aurelia guessed. Akali raised her eyebrows and said, It's interesting. Next, Ling Su revealed to everyone that his parents, who were the original owners of the body, had died. Later, he followed the tavern owner to live a simple life here. Poor child, Karma sympathized with this. After thinking for a moment, she continued, Well, now that this has happened, you can't go back to the tavern. You come with us first, and the rune matter will gradually be resolved. At this point, everyone parted ways. Akali and Keenan returned to the balanced sect, while also left alone drinking. Aurelia, Karma, and Ruiz were originally in a group of three, but they became six due to the addition of Ling Su, Yi, and Wukong. According to Wukong, he wanted to prevent Ruiz from attacking Ling Su again. In order to protect Ling Su, he stayed with Yi. Monkey brother has such a kind heart. Ling Su was immediately moved. With doubts about runes, the six of them descended the mountain and returned to the residential area arranged by Aurelia for Ruiz, Yi, and Wukong. Similarly, Ling Su has also settled here. Chapter 5 The Coming of War You are listening at NovelFull.audio A few weeks ago The mid-air above the summit of Giant God Peak When a figure shuttled into the land of runes, Aurelian Thor had already sensed that his powerful divine consciousness allowed him to know everything in an instant. Sure enough, the blue dragon arrived at the giant god peak in just a moment, in front of Aurelian Thor. I finally found you, Thor. It seems like you're trapped here. The blue dragon didn't need to open its mouth, and its ethereal voice had already sounded. Aurelian Thor exhaled heavily and made a contemptuous voice. The cunning human has put on this crown with imprisoning magic and curses for me. I could have easily broken free, but doing so would trigger the curse, causing the planets I created to explode one after another. I don't want to see such a scene. Glancing at the magnificent golden crown on the opponent's head, the blue dragon shook its head slightly, as if feeling a bit helpless. Then, he only raised his claw and pointed, causing the crown to shatter and scatter into powder. To be honest, you traveled here on your own without saying hello, but ended up being trapped by humans for thousands of years. As your kind, I feel very embarrassed. The blue dragon's eyes half narrowed and looked at each other. Aurelian Thor ignored the other person's words, as if he had already become accustomed to his tendency to squeeze himself. The silence lasted for a few seconds, and the blue dragon sensed something. He raised his eyebrows and looked down at the rune land below. It seems that there are many extraordinary beings in this world, and even gods. Interestingly, I need to communicate with them. He opened up divine consciousness and pulled the divine like existence of the rune land into a dimension of divine consciousness. Not long after, his consciousness withdrew from the space, and his voice carried a hint of joy. Three and a half gods, two true gods. I'm becoming more and more interested in this place, it seems like I need to take a good stroll. Before that, those damn giant god race humans have to pay the price for this. I want them to know the consequences of stealing my power and angering me. Aurelian Thor's eyes were fixed on the giant god peak below. The blue dragon withdrew its gaze and looked at Aurelian Thor. Forget it, Thor. Don't tell me that you haven't felt that this world is about to face a huge disaster. As the supreme creation god, you shouldn't be angry with those small lives. Don't forget our nature of loving all life in the universe. We just need to slowly appreciate the changes in this world. And I really want to see if the human with a trace of my divine power can use this power to change the pattern of this world, which will be very interesting. As he spoke his last sentence, the blue dragon opened up divine consciousness sharing, allowing Aurelian Thor to instantly understand what this so dot called human with a hint of opponent's divine power was all about. Aurelian Thor's deep dragon I looked at the blue dragon and said, have you become so bored? As you please, I need to rest for a while to restore the lost divine power. After waiting for a moment, 
Aurelian Thor, who was resting with his eyes closed, slowly opened his eyes and said, All right, tell me, how have you been during these years? Aushing. Although Thor could know what the other person had experienced during this time by releasing his divine sense sharing again, he endured too much loneliness and silence, so he chose to let the other person speak up on his own. I thought you were so foolish that you forgot my name, Il Xing chuckled softly and began to talk about how he eliminated several black holes, protected several planets, and even understood the power of black holes for his own use. In the sky above the land of runes, beyond the sight of mortals, two huge dragons are hovering here, waiting for this world to perform a good show for them. Time goes back to the present. Ionia. Ling Su entered the room and found a wooden bed to sit down on. His hands were casually placed on his thighs, and his eyes stared blankly at the floor. I was originally thinking about making friends with them, but now, like a dangerous person, I feel like I'm under house arrest here. Ling Su feels a wave of helplessness. He lifted his right hand and watched as the back of his hand emitted white light and red light. Is it this thing that attracts runes? It's really magical. Ling Su muttered to himself, feeling confused by the substance already present in the back of his hand. When everyone was choosing their own room just now, Ruiz chose Ling Su's next door directly. Whenever Ling Su's body had any abnormalities, he could rush in and take measures immediately. Wukong and Master Yi are on their opposite side. Taking a deep breath and then exhaling, Ling Su felt speechless and had no choice but to think of other things. At this point, Akali has not yet left the balanced sect, indicating that her current thoughts have not yet clashed with the Waste Brother, Happy Wind Man should have cleared the misunderstanding with his clan members, proving that his master, Elder Suma, was not killed by him. Only then can he return to fight to protect Ionia, Bald must have experienced the incident where his mentor Tyrus and disciple Fireman Brand were enchanted by runes, but he didn't have a single rune in his hand. Could it be in Fireman's hands thinking of this, Ling Su shook his head and lay down on the wooden bed, looking at the ceiling and muttering to himself, now let's not talk about finding my parents. It's a question of whether I can survive in the hands of Rez and the Norksons. Sigh. Time quickly arrived in the afternoon. After six people finished dinner, Barilia asked everyone to rest early because the sentinels and intelligence on the edge of Ionia had already discovered the presence of the Nox's legion, and they were likely to officially attack Navali tomorrow. During the meal, except for Arya and Karma talking about enemy words and Goku's chatter, everyone else remained silent and silent for a long time. Although the light on Ling Su's hand had been controlled and wouldn't flicker again, Ruiz still stared at him from time to time, causing Ling Su to feel embarrassed. As the sunset sets and night follows closely behind, most of the people of Ionia slowly fall asleep with uneasy emotions. In his sleep, Ling Su once again saw the figure of the semi-imaginary and semi-real dragon, which was different from the red irregularly shaped stone object. This time, he saw it clearer than before. The figure of the giant dragon presented a blue color, and the feeling brought by its outline made Ling Su seem to have seen it somewhere before, but he couldn't remember it, and this stone was already confirmed to be the dark red world rune during the day. I don't know how long I slept, but Ling Su suddenly woke up with a hand pushing him. He opened his eyes in a daze, only to see Wukong and Master Yi standing by his bed, and it was Wukong who woke him up. What's wrong, what's up? Ling Su instinctively rubbed his eyes and looked at the two of them. He still felt very tired, indicating that it was not morning, it should be early morning. Wukong scratched his furry cheeks with a somewhat anxious expression and said, Are you called Jocelyn? Get up quickly, the Noxes suddenly chose to attack at this moment. Come with us. After listening to the other party's words, Ling Su finally noticed that they were already holding weapons in their hands. The three of them ran out of the wooden house and happened to see Liz standing on the open space outside. Aurelia and Kalma have led a large number of middle-aged men from the Ionian people to the front line to participate in the war, while the rest of the elderly, women, and children have taken refuge in the rear. The four of them arrived at Presidian, 
and with the full moon and the surrounding campfires, they could see clearly around them. At a glance, a huge number of people crowded the land. A few hundred meters ahead, all the members of the Nox's legion were wearing iron black armor, holding shields and weapons, while the ordinary people of Ionia were only wearing simple clothes and holding makeshift spears. Both sides are slowly getting closer to each other, and war is on the verge of breaking out. Watching such a spectacular scene made Ling Su feel flustered, and he, who had never experienced war firsthand, felt a bit at a loss at this moment. Brother Jocelyn. Where did you go before? Why haven't you come back to the tavern from ZhaoZhuyuan.com? A familiar voice sounded, and Ling Su turned his head to see that it was Mr. Dalpan. Ling Su responded with some surprise, well, I had some delays yesterday. By the way, boss, why are you here? Aren't you taking refuge? In his view, not to mention Dalpan's personality of not daring to face war, after all, everyone wants to survive, and even if it's the other person's beer belly, he's not a master who can fight. Dalpan smiled and shook his head, do you want me to take refuge with the elderly and children? That's too embarrassing. But you, even though you're twenty years old, have the courage to come here. I don't want to come either. Who made me carry a time bomb on my body? They won't let me separate from them, fortunately, I had already recruited two guys, otherwise I wouldn't have been busy alone last night. All right, let's not say, the enemy is coming soon. Dal Pan looked into the distance with a helpless and bitter smile on his face. Ling Su could tell that the boss was pretending to be calm. The chat just now was also to calm the tense emotions. Of course, he himself was the same. Even those who survived the Battle of Stand Up a few years ago would have this feeling when facing this second war, after all, no one would not be afraid of war. Arya stood in the first row of the crowd, looking at the army of Noxas across from her without any hesitation. She still raised her right hand and shouted, Ionia, hold on high. As soon as the words fell, all the Ionians rushed out at this moment, no one would back down in order to protect their homeland from harm. At the same time, the leading soldiers of the Lexus Legion also sounded their horns, and a large group of soldiers advanced forward. When the people at both ends collided, war, it's starting. Chapter 9 Conflict you are listening at NovelFull.audio. After following for a while, everyone arrived at their destination. Not far ahead, a wooden house that is several times larger than an ordinary residence is built here. At this moment, the door is open, and looking inside, there is a huge rectangular wooden table in the center of the site. There are ten chairs on the left and right sides of the wooden table, and two chairs are placed at the top, totaling 20.2 chairs. At this point, there were already many people inside. A group of middle-aged men were sitting on the left side of the wooden table, while another group of people dressed in simple monks were sitting on the right side. It seemed that they were probably members of the Navali Brotherhood and martial monks from Shwoji. The Hilana Monastery is a distance from Navali, which means that the monk from Shwoji came specifically to have a meeting with the other party this time. The other Ionians who watched the excitement stood behind the chairs. As Ling Su and the other four walked in, they also saw familiar figures. Aurelia and Karma sitting at the top. Both sides nodded to each other, and the four of them stood aside. Ling Su looked around and found that many faces seemed to have some memories. They were probably people who had participated in the battle against the enemy forces of Texas. This was also natural. Except for women, elderly people, and children who were not suitable for combat, normal young men participated in the battle to defend their homes. But just a casual glance made Ling Su discover a familiar figure again. Among the people of the Shuoji faction, one of them is particularly prominent. Red cloth strips wrap around his eyes, while others are wrapped around his limbs with white cloth strips. A long braid hangs behind his head, and he has no clothes on his upper body, only black loose pants on his lower body. In the Navali Brotherhood, there was a person with red hair, 
wearing a coat that exposed his chest and arms, as if showing off his huge muscles, wearing fists on both hands, and wearing grey pants under his body, showing off his dominance. These two people are the blind monk. Li Qing, and the wrist warrior. Surti. I'll go, blind, strong F, cough cough cough. Why are Li Qing and Surti here too? Ling Su's heart suddenly resounded with Chinese roast. Li Qing is indeed a martial monk of Shua Ji, but it is unknown to Ling Su that Surti actually joined the Navali Brotherhood. Memories of being on earth began to float in Ling Su's mind. He remembered that this highly popular hero who used his fists as weapons had a unique past. Surti's mother was a Vastayan, but her father was a Norse. This combination gave birth to this genetically unique half-orc, which also led to Surti being cursed by many people. Bastards and aliens often reached his ears. One day later, the father of the Noxes left Ionia without saying goodbye, leaving only Seti and his mother to support and live together. Siti, who was still young, was puzzled why his father abandoned their mother and son. After learning that his father had worked in Ionia to fight and earn money, he disregarded his mother's advice and quietly sneaked into the Sodot called Combat Arena one night. Due to the fact that the Noxes had come to Ionia before, this underground fighting arena had many Noxes soldiers. When he learned that his father had gone to a larger overseas fighting arena to earn more money, he was angry and demanded to participate in the fight here. At first, everyone present thought that the boy was meant to be funny, but the result surprised them immensely. As a half-orc, Seti possessed powerful strength and ferocity. He used his fists to knock down one gladiator after another, as if he was born into this profession. Surti brings back the money she earns every night to show filial piety to her mother, and she keeps it a secret from her about going to the fight arena. Later, when he became the king of the fighting arena, he was not satisfied. He defeated the manager of the fighting arena and became the new owner of the field. Recalling this, Ling Su began to become curious. Does he even want to annex the Navar Brotherhood? This is the rhythm of becoming the leader of Ionia. Ling Su stole a glance at Surti not far away, and the corner of his mouth twitched slightly. At this moment, Aurelia looked around and said, Let's start. One of the men from the Navarre Brotherhood quickly took on the conversation. I think everyone is also well aware that in the past decade or so, the Noxus Legion has attacked our homeland three times, each time causing huge damage to us. We cannot continue like this, we must unite and become a militarized group like them, cultivating excellent soldiers. Only when they are strong enough to counterattack Noxus, will Ionia not continue to suffer. I don't agree, a monk from Shuoji responded, since our ancestors, Ionia has maintained the tradition of nature and peace for hundreds of years. Do you want to break everyone's ordinary and peaceful days and let them practice how to kill every day? So what's the difference between this and Noxus? The man at this end snorted coldly and said, Don't you understand? If we don't make any changes, the only thing waiting for us is the outcome of this land being occupied by the enemy. After waiting for the two sides to argue for a while, Barilia raised her hand to signal everyone to calm down, and then looked towards the Navarre Brotherhood. I understand your desire to make your home stronger, but as Master Shuoji said, we have always lived a peaceful life of farming and animal husbandry. How can we get used to the lifestyle of the Noxes? This kind of change is not a good solution. Besides, where should we get our armor and weapons from? Karma, sitting next to Aurelia, agreed. Without these, no matter how much we unify and transform, we cannot become like Texas. Different regional environments make it impossible for us to change. The people of Ionia standing around were only whispering, and no ordinary person dared to voice opposition to the Navali Brotherhood like Aurelia, Karma, and Shoji monks. After listening to the two of them, the man just sneered and said. I also guessed that there would be such a result, Arya. I don't think you're suitable to be a leader anymore. The Navarre Brotherhood should be the one. We will gather people with similar ideas and form our own army. After speaking, all the members of the Navali Brotherhood stood up, 
intending to leave the wooden house, without even paying attention to Aurelia, Karma, and the martial monks of Shuoji. So tough. Is it strength? Surdi's idea. Ling Su couldn't help but feel curious in his heart. For a moment, he recalled the scenes of war and the death of Dalpin's boss, and suddenly felt a sense of unease. I don't know where the courage came from, but as these people were about to leave the door, Ling Su reached out and stopped them, saying. A war has just ended, and how many people have not yet recovered from the pain of losing loved ones and friends? Now that you want to divide the people of Ionia, is this really good? The man at the forefront gave an indifferent glance at the young boy who was blocking his way and sneered, where did that wild boy come from? Wait, I recognize him. He seems to be the young man who hit the Noxus monster. The person behind saw Ling Su's appearance clearly. Oh. Interesting. Siddy, who was walking in the middle of the crowd, suddenly spoke up as if interested. He walked up to the front and looked at Ling Su, saying, Did you take away the prey that originally belonged to me? Hiss. How dare I stop them just now? It must be runes that influenced my mind, right Ling Su, who had only realized later, realized that he seemed to be being targeted. If I hadn't been busy hammering those soldiers on the other end and hadn't been able to come over, that big guy would have been my opponent, said he chuckled lightly and continued, well, let's make a bet. As long as you can beat me in the fight field, we won't be doing anything about a self-sufficient army. At this moment, Arya from behind raised her voice and said, don't go too far. Surti ignored her words and asked Ling Su again, what's up, kid? Do you want to accept this bet? It is impossible to say that Ling Su was not at all panicked as he looked at the man in front of him, who was half a head taller than himself and full of muscles. When he was silent and didn't know what to say, Goku beside him let out his unique sharp voice. Okay, who's afraid of who? Come on. Forget it, monkey brother, I. Ling Su was startled by Wukong, but halfway through, he was interrupted by Ruiz and said, Go ahead, let's test your exercise results during this period. Glancing wide-eyed at the bald wizard next to him, Ling Su was suddenly choked and speechless. You're right, no amount of practice is better than actual combat, E also agreed. What? Isn't it too big to watch the excitement? Dao Mei doesn't agree with this matter, you three are really. Well, if I didn't stop them with my mind, there wouldn't be this one now. This wave of mine. Ling Su felt helpless in his heart. Come on, kid, education and education guys. That's right, don't be afraid. For area's leadership position, defeat them. The people on the side began to cheer. So, the bet was finalized. A large group of people walked out of the wooden house and arrived at the Sodot called Underground Fighting Field. They didn't say anything to the martial monks in Shuoji. Most of them returned to Zalana Monastery, with only a few people following, and Li Qin was among them. Li Qin once sneaked into a secret library in Shuoji Temple, learning and mastering the power of the Divine Dragon through ancient texts. During a certain invasion of Texas, he used this powerful and uncontrollable force to fight against the enemy, causing his eyes to burn and losing sight. He felt the power hidden within Ling Su's body in the just-ended war, which piqued his interest. That's why he followed him to the fight field. Although he couldn't see anything with his blindness, he could still judge things around him through hearing and sensing. The underground fighting arena was filled with a bloody smell, and everyone had already sat down in the stands, waiting for this exciting scene. Alas, I didn't expect the Navarre Brotherhood to reach such a point where they had to rely on their own army if negotiations didn't succeed, Aurelia sighed as soon as she sat down. Karma nodded and said, I don't believe they will use this bet as a bargaining chip, I just hope that Jocelyn will be fine. Don't worry, I will always be vigilant. Whenever there is a situation that threatens his life, I will immediately take action to stop it. Now let this young man exercise well in real combat, said Ruiz calmly on the side under the gaze of the audience in the stands, Ling Su slowly walked to the center of the competition stage. 
Outside the arena, the man from the Navali Brotherhood just patted Surti's shoulder and said, Just give me this kind of wild kid. I don't believe he killed that monster. This time, let's see what he has. Surti smiled and didn't speak. The man understood and walked into the arena. Chapter 6 Cruelty You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The war started, and Arya took the lead. She stepped on an enemy and jumped up into the crowd of the Nox's legion, dancing her floating blades to attack the enemy in front of her. Karma, Master Yi, Ryukong, Ruiz, Akali, Kenan, and Yasuo are all fighting in different positions. As a spiritual leader, Karma unleashed psychic spells to attack enemies while putting on magical shields for his unstoppable comrades, taking care of the entire battlefield. On the other side, an indistinct figure quickly shuttled through the crowd. It was Master E, who was wielding the profound and unpredictable infinite sword technique. Before the enemy could see clearly, they had already fallen to the ground, and with the powerful sweep of Wukong's enchanted long staff, they were completely at ease with two enemies and one hundred enemies. The runes on Ruiz's skin began to shine, and he mobilized arcane energy to transform into a spell ball and attack the enemies. Noxus's shield had no effect in front of his arcane magic. The two ninjas of the balanced sect. Akali and Kenan, one wielding a sickle and piercing the enemy's neck or heart quickly, accurately, and fiercely, while the other held a sword in their hand, throwing each one with a surge of lightning, causing considerable damage to the enemy. Lanka Yasuo skillfully wielded his windward swordsmanship, with the gust of wind cutting open the enemy's throat like a blade. When another group of Noxes gathered, he clenched his sword and unleashed a whirlwind, sweeping a large area of enemies into the air. How impressive! Ling Su stared blankly at the scene in front of him. Even when living on Earth, Using the skills of these characters countless times in the game cannot match the visual impact they bring at this moment. He didn't come to his senses until Boss Dalpan handed him a spear. With these leaders blocking the way, this battle effectively formed a situation where five or six Ionians faced two or three Noxes, making up for the disadvantage in combat equipment. Boss Dalpan naturally targeted areas with few enemies and skillfully poked them with a spear. Ling Su, who had the unknown substance on the back of his hand, also mustered the courage to join the battle with this extraordinary power beyond ordinary people. Of course, with professional training and good combat equipment, the Noxes are less likely to be suppressed by the Ionians who lack armor and lack fighting skills, even with fewer enemies. A chaotic battle, blood splattered across the land, dyeing the grass red. The situation of this war is in the hands of the leaders on both sides. As long as Arya and her team kill all the enemy troops on the front line, they can turn around and consider their Ionian comrades around. If they persist, they can win this battle. But no one noticed that the leader of the Noxus Legion seemed to have not yet appeared the soldiers of Noxus also noticed the impressive combat power of the opposing team so several groups of soldiers began to bypass from the side and focus on attacking the rear of Ionia. As long as Ionia's numbers were quickly reduced, the leader of Ionia would become weak and ultimately unable to defeat four hands with two fists. After all, overall, the resistance army in Ionia is just an ordinary group of people, relying solely on the strength of Aurelia and other people to withstand the siege of professional soldiers from Texas. Looking at the corpses and blood scattered all over the ground, Ling Su's panic never diminished. At this moment, there were still constant enemies rushing towards him. He and his compatriots in Ionia noticed that the number of enemies was not only not decreasing, but also increasing. Slowly, the situation has shifted from being dominated by more Ionians to being on par with the enemy forces of Knox. Just as Ling Su exerted a considerable force to kick one person away and stab the spear to kill the other, he instinctively glanced at Durpun on the side in his spare moment. At this moment, Durpun was sweating profusely and was thrusting his spear towards the enemy in front of him. But without the help of four or five Ionian compatriots, there is a high probability that he will not be able to win against the opponent. Sure enough, the soldier's reaction was quick. 
He raised his left shield directly, blocked the attack, and flew his spear out. Then, he raised his right hand and slashed the opponent's abdomen horizontally, making a bright red cut. Boss! Ling Su's pupils instantly widened and he stared straight at the scene in front of him. As Darpun fell to the ground, an unknown object on the back of Ling Su's hand emitted a white light uncontrollably. When the soldier who had just killed Darpun and two other soldiers from behind rushed towards Ling Su's side, they were unexpectedly shaken several meters away by an invisible energy wave. Ling Su didn't care how the enemy flew out at all. He just took a quick step forward, knelt on the grass, gently supported the back of Darpun's head with his right hand, and pressed his left hand on the opponent's bloody abdomen. Boss! Ling Su couldn't believe the scene in front of him as he watched the large amount of blood continuously flowing out of his abdomen. Dao Pan was on the brink of death as he slowly raised the corner of his mouth and struggled to say the last sentence. Help the boss take revenge. And then. Live well. As the words fell, Dao Pan could no longer breathe. Ling Su was panting heavily, trembling uncontrollably as he pressed his hand on Dao Pan's abdomen. This, as his first friend after traveling to this world, has now died in front of him. The brutality of war and the impact of the death of friends were a direct shock to Ling Su's heart, leaving his mind blank. Although the three soldiers just now fell to the ground after being shaken off by strange force, they were not injured much. After standing up, they continued to fight against the surrounding Ionians. A few seconds passed, and the sound of battles around him finally woke Ling Su up. He took a deep breath and lifted Dalpan's body, while staring at the three enemies not far away. The object on the back of his hand flickered uncontrollably three times with a faint white light, and then the three Texas soldiers and several surrounding enemies fell directly to the ground in an instant, losing their vital signs. No ordinary person knows what happened, only these few soldiers felt their internal organs being twisted and crushed directly. And Liz, on the other hand, naturally sensed it. While killing several enemies, he looked at Ling Su's direction with some confusion and muttered to himself, the power of world runes. No, it doesn't seem like. Taking advantage of the gap in which the enemies around him had reduced by more than half, Ling Su carried Dao Pan's body and walked to a tree behind him, placing Dao Pan down and leaning against the trunk before walking back. This seems to be to prevent the enemy from trampling on Dao Pan's body. When he returned to the battlefield again, the mysterious energy he had just experienced no longer appeared, but he still relied on his original strength to help many Ionian compatriots solve dozens or twenty enemies. At this point, Arya and others had already eliminated most of the frontline enemies, but they had not had time to take care of their fellow countrymen behind them. They saw a tall figure over two meters in the distance ahead, charging out of the enemy forces in Knox. When this figure quickly rushed to the front line, its burly body with tremendous force collided directly with Aurelia, pushing her out. The one who came was the ultimate weapon of the Nox's legion. The undead god of war. Sean. Sean, who was more than twice as tall as an ordinary person, was exposed to his upper body covered in scars, with only his left shoulder and lower body nailed to rough armor. He held a giant axe that matched his own tonnage, and his mouth under the steel claw mask let out a roar, which immediately scared the Ionians back several steps. Whenever Sean swung a giant axe or stepped forward, he could kill five or six Ionians. At this point, he was already a walking corpse who was unconscious and only knew how to indiscriminately slaughter. He had already died a long time ago, but now he has been resurrected by strange magic and is once again serving as a servant of Noxus. When Aurelia stood up and noticed that Sean had once again raised his giant axe in his hand to strike her, just a short distance away, Karma appeared in time and released her magical shield, blocking the blow for Aurelia. Behind Kalma, a collie followed closely and jumped onto Sean's left shoulder. She swung a sickle and slashed the opponent's face. Before the opponent could react, she immediately flipped back and withdrew, while throwing three smoke bombs, obstructing their view. Arya was also unwilling to be outdone and used her sharp blades to counterattack the tall enemy. 
On one side, Aso used his windward swordsmanship to roll up a large group of soldiers, leaving a wide path for Keenan. Keenan followed closely and transformed into a lightning sphere, quickly reaching Sean's feet, releasing a lightning ninja technique that was not small in scope and directly attacking Sean. This combination of attacks was supposed to cause considerable damage to this large monster, but when the smoke grenade dissipated, it was seen that Sean's recent damage was recovering at a visible speed to the naked eye. On the other end, Master Yi, Wu Kong, and Ruiz also approached, and the person with force and weapons was responsible for restraining Sean. They sought out the sorcerer from the book garden www.chaoshuyuan. Calm to release spell damage from behind. Despite facing the siege of so many people, Sean was still able to constantly recover from his wounds, and even had the courage to fight more and more. Damn it, this guy can't be killed like that, Akali frowned and said. Ruiz began to think of a solution. This won't work. I was injured before coming to Ionia and couldn't exert all my strength. And to deal with this resurrected, self-healing corpse that was forbidden by magic, elemental magic is the most advantageous choice, preferably the fire element. Quickly, he thought of something and looked in a certain direction behind him, but hesitated a bit. Wu Kong, who raised his enchanted long stick and stopped Sean's foot horizontally, shouted, Hey, bald mage, have you come up with a solution? I can't hold on anymore. It seems that we can only give it a try. Ruiz ignored Wu Kong and quickly walked to the back, grabbing Ling Su's slightly confused arm and leading him to the front line. Immediately, Ruiz mobilized a small ball of arcane magic and gathered it in his palm, then pressed it onto Ling Su's temple. Kid, listen to me now, relax your body and mind, concentrate your thoughts, feel the flow of magic in your body, and then activate it. Ruiz looked at the young boy next to him and said word by word, I have injected a wave of magic into your body to help you connect with the rune on you. See if you can try to use this power. When Ruiz pulled him to the front line, Ling Su had already calmed down a lot from his previous emotions and noticed that Sean was in a stalemate with Arya and the others ahead. He swallowed his saliva and began to close his eyes, focusing his attention. Ten seconds later, a red light flickered on the back of his hand. Chapter 13 Helana Monastery You are listening at NovelFull.audio De Ko Lois Ara Trong Qua Trin Lay Text Chapter 12 Gentle Flames You are listening at NovelFull.audio De Ko Lois Ara Trong Qua Trin Lay Text